following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Tuesday, the 16th of April, mid-month, and we're looking at the Dow up 114 and 37,853 after a really brutal session yesterday in many of the indices. Dow actually doesn't look that bad, except it's been on its way down since the 39,889 uh, top back on 27th of March. Uh, this is the daily chart, and the daily chart is going to a sell mode. <clears throat> it's holding the, it held yesterday, the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Target Support Line. And that, let me just open this up so you can see what I'm looking at here. And that's going into this whole area where 37,132 is really the downside target within the, by, by next week, by the end of this week, actually, <clears throat> if there's further weakness. But... Uh, let me just show you the technicals as I look at it. Here's the nine-period moving average pink sharply under the 14. The MACD is very weak. The red of strength is this little gray line over here. Uh, it's it, it's weak. And if you look at the on-balance volume, it's weak. If you look at the stochastic, it's down at 7%. Remember, 7% on the downside if you are bearish, and we are bearish uh, this short term, not long term, but bearish because we've got short position in the, uh, in the Dow. So it's just off the top. Uh, when the stochastic is up over 80% and holding like it was there, that's really bullish. Uh, when the nine-period moving average is over the 14-period moving average, that's really bullish. When everything's negative and you're down at 7%, think of it as if it was 82.30% uh, on the upside. I'd say, wow, if you're long, stay long because that's really good. But wait a minute, if you're down, that means if you're short, stay short. Well, at this particular point, means we've got to go daily chart to the weekly chart. And this is where I spent some time yesterday saying that I've got two almost parallel highs. The, invariably, I take the second one as a really good opportunity uh, to at least consider it as a peak. In the Chapway methodology, we try to identify a low, and then on the fourth highest peak, peak D, that's where I say other things can happen. You could get a restart, an instant restart. They can go much higher. There's a bunch of things. But most importantly, that's where you can also get your sharpest downward. But every once in a while, we just miss making that D, not we, whatever it is we're following, by just a couple of cents or a couple of dollars if it's a high-priced stock. And in this case, we went 39,889 to 39,860s. So I considered that because the MACD was turning down, stochastic was turning down, on balance was turning down. That was like a phantom peak. So it was like you, you did get to D on the technicals. It was just this little pop-up. The MACD, the moving average convergence, divergence, and the nine-period moving average was still strong. That I used it as a D, and I said, that's the chance that we got a very sharp pullback. Well, so far, we've got that pullback. And even today, the earlier on, we were over 200 points in the futures, and we couldn't hold it. I don't think that after all the selling pressure, I, I think that there's a bounce, and that bounce, oh, let me see if I can do it on this chart. I'm hoping that this is the chart that I could pull up. No, nope, it's not the chart. Oh, man. Where is that chart? Is it over here? Is it this white one here? Uh Nope, it's not this one. <laughs> okay, forget it. Um, I had a chart. Or was it this one here? Yes. So what we've got here is uh, I picked it up and it's got the SMHs. You can see here are all the resistance points and here are all the, the red is the support and the black is the resistance. And it held all of those. And then we've had between 228 and 241, we've had a number of uh, daily chart resistance is chap wave automated. It's based on the MACD and the stochastic. I'd asked my my good friend, Herb, the late Herb Brun, to do it, and he did this great uh, work for me. Unfortunately, he passed away. So some of the things that I really wanted him to continue with are unavailable. Um, anyway, 
So you can see the SMHs have this whole bunch of support levels. Let's just go one at a time on this. This is just the daily chart. Look, here's the daily chart. Look at the cluster of support levels we've got. Um, these are automated. And look at the stochastic down at 6%. That's very negative. But at the same time, watching the – oh, where did I put it? Do I not have it here on this particular chart? No, I don't. Um, so what we're looking at is if this fails – 36,541 is the 200 period moving average. I, I don't have to think of that just yet, even though we're on the way down, because it has to pierce these these support levels. Look at the S&P, SPX.X, trading right now down uh, just 65 cents at 5,061. It has two uh, uh, support levels, if I can actually pick up, 5,072.33 uh, 5 and 5,069. Um, and here it is with a low today of 5,045. So it's gone below it. Can it get above these resistance levels? Look at the QQQ. QQQ has 427. What's the low today? 429. So it's holding quite nicely. But look at the resistance at 447.29, which is where it reversed uh, a couple of days ago. And you can see it's got the pink nine period exponential moving average. Let's look at the IWM. IWM. Uh, has 194.82 as the next key support. What's the low today? 193.36. When you break under it, you, you really don't have more than a day in which to kind of bounce back over it. And right now, 194.03, we aren't yeah. over it, but 194.82 will be the number to be following uh, throughout the day. Let's go to the gold GC. You can see 2413.80 is automated resistance levels. We went higher than that. We went to, I think it was 40-something, yeah, 2448.8. Uh, and look at the silver and gold right now is up just $1.09 at 2384.5. This is the cash. Cash S&P is, uh, cash silver is up um, at the 2811 level, uh, so down 60 cents. 29.76 was the uh, automated chapter. Look at those resistance. They worked over there. So we were watching this. And the level that I'm watching is, so it went to 29.99 yesterday, 29.78 is the automated resistance level, and it's a little bit below that. Uh, I wanted to show you the bonds. We've broken all the support levels in bonds. It's at 113 in 20, 30 seconds, down 21, 30 seconds. So the level to watch is now what was a support at 115.50. That's, that's going to be 115 it says 50, but that would have to be um, put into uh, the fraction. So it's 113 and 1930 seconds. Let's do it on the TLT because most people have that. TLT broke under the 88.86 automated uh, support, and now that's resistant and it's trading at 88.05 right now. So um, that's what we've got. Let's look at the high grade copper. High grade copper was doing so well, pulling back today. At 4.28, it's down just nine cents, and there's three, 4.42 and 4.47 are the automated resistance levels. Someone had asked me yesterday if I, I don't, I wouldn't mind showing some of this in greater detail after I showed it when I was doing Tom's show yesterday. Um, what am I missing? I'm missing crude oil. Crude oil is trading uh, just down 28 cents at 85.14. And it doesn't have any automated resistance levels here, but that resistance is now supported 84.03 and it's trading at 85. Dow's a trap, tight fish sound, Dow's up 161, SP is now up to better action. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So I showed some of those uh, automated Chapman Wave support and resistance levels. The next question came in. Could you could you go over the uh, chart with the um, 914s? Because they seem to have been really important. Yeah, so um, I had mentioned that Broadcom, AVGO, it was a Vagio, they um, uh, brought it over. Um, this is, uh, so Broadcom is trading at 1,315 up 4.72. And this is green. Still, the nine-period moving average has not turned down. But a, uh, NVIDIA has. NVIDIA is now probably up a little bit, surely. Yes, up 16 at 876.49. It went uh, green. It's been green since... The last time it was green was in December the third, December the thirteenth, when it was down the four seventy four eighty area. Here it is, having gone all the way to a high of uh, a nine sixty seven. Uh, wait a minute, wait, it had that all time high. Wait, whoa, 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 let me get back to this. Yeah, over. Oops, wrong chart. That's right here. Yeah. Anyway, it's gone pink. And the SMHs are they still pink? Yep, they're still pink. That's the first time the SMHs since. Uh, uh, just a brief one day turned to pink, having gone positive green on the 6th of November down the 140 area, 138. Um, this is the first time that it has turned pink. And that just says that, uh, no, sorry, second time. It did it for a day back in uh, this, uh, January. So I'm watching this very closely. It's a work in progress. If you can go through all the others, I'll go through the others by going through the diamonds. Look, the diamonds are very negative up to date in price, but that nine is 14 is first time it went pink the other uh, about a week or so ago uh, since it crossed on November the 3rd to the positive side. Spy is the same thing. Spy went pink for a couple of days now. Uh, Spy is up 35 cents at 504.80. Uh, QQQ. There it is. Pink. It went pink and green in the last couple of two weeks. Uh, now it's pink again. And IWM 
is very pink. It's been this way for a while, very sharp decline. So with that said, yes, I've covered that now, and now I can go to all the other questions that I had. I'm going to go to right here. I go to my major charts. This is my daily, weekly, monthly. Look, daily, weekly, monthly. Now, I had mentioned this, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it a few times because here again, I have to consider this to be a work in progress. The Dow on a purely Chapman Wave methodology is actually at, actually at a peak C. But over the, not the years, over the decades, over the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of charts that are, every chart you ever see of mine is notated. Many, many of them are notated for the third or fourth time in the daily, weekly, monthly because I used to use a, lose a lot of data. I don't even want to talk about it now because ah, so far it's been not bad. I've used a slightly different system now of saving, etc. But I have no idea when I'm going to lose that data. Then whatever charts I've had, most recent charts, um, it, for, I don't want to go into it. All I can say is that I, I lose data. It's there somewhere in the library, but I can't find it. Okay. So with that said, what we're looking at now is that if the weekly charts, and I used a phantom peak because this peak, I don't want to go through the numbers, this peak back on the uh, week of the 1st of December in the Dow and then the 8th of December is just a fractional decline, a uh, sl slightly lower high, but then it happened a second time. And what I always do is I say, okay, I'm going to use the second one as a phantom peak. I'm calling it a peak in this case, A, not only that, this would have been a peak A right there. That would have been one of the longest single weekly charts to the upside, not in a big move uh, in, in, in three bars, but in a whole bunch of bars. I'm talking about going from um, October, the week of the 27th, the low of the 27th, all the way to <clears throat> the, the first week of February. I mean, that's amazing, right? High highs, every single week was high highs, except... There was just a fractional higher high here, and I, the same as over there. This time I used it. And the reason why I'm making a big deal about this is because I said to subscribers over the weekend to my opening call um, that the reason why I'm very concerned here is that if I'm correct in saying that the degree of decline in the daily chart has been so substantial and so quick and so pers per persistent that I have to consider that all the action could in fact be the action of a peak D in the weekly. And that's not just the, the major thing. The major thing is the, the, the futures that trade not in the market hours, they trade overnight, they trade in the weekends on Sunday night. That is a genuine peak D right there. Now, what's the big deal? Because in the Chapman Wave methodology, the objective is to get you to a peak D like this here. It's gone to a peak D in the daily chart of the YM. That's different to the uh, peak C1, C2 in the daily chart of the Dow. Uh, and even the uh, – I didn't check that out. Yeah, even the diamonds went to peak C1, C2. So that – and the diamonds, I, as I say, I've used this uh, phantom peak. So I'm considering that there's a really good chance – because of that, if I go to the E-mini futures, I've got a big D, a genuine one. This is not no phantom peaks, no nothing. Peak F in the daily chart, peak D in the weekly chart, a leg D in the monthly chart. Uh, I, I have to take it seriously, even though the spy, I, no matter how I try, I can't get the spy to have a peak D. I can't get the S&P to have a, right there to have a peak D. It's absolutely a peak C. So there's there was some every once in a while over the decades, I would get either the Dow or the Di or the Diamonds, DIA, um, which is what we're short, um, in the short term, not the long term. So got very good long term positions. Um, every once in a while, I'd get a D in either the Dow or the uh, or the diamonds, and I had to choose one of them, and invariably that turned out to be the correct move. So I'm just saying, I've got that in the S&P. I have a, a conflict between the futures, which trade 20, not 24 hours a day, but most of the time, 20, almost 24 hours a day. And look at the QQQ. They've already made a peak D. Look at the IWM. It's already made a peak D. Look at the SMHs. Made a peak E, and it's been stalling since 239.14, 
back on the 8th of uh, March, and uh, here it is, pulling back. Uh, and not a bad day today, it's actually up 95 cents. But look, turned pink on the nine period moving average in the daily, nothing in the weekly, not even close in the weekly. So this is what I'm saying, it's a work in progress on the shorter term, I would just want to be ready that there could be a deeper correction. I don't know if there's going to be, but that's why I've included the weekly charts. Now, uh, RS, RSP, this is also an important indicator that I like to use. That's a peak F. Uh, this is kind of convoluted. It's peak G in the daily. And what is it? It's the S&P 500 equal weight ETF. Now, one of the reasons why I'm making a big deal about this is because the starting point was in October. October, the week of the 14th and the SP, RSP. That's, as I say, the 500 equal weight. So it went peak A. That's an A. That's still an A. That wasn't a higher high. That becomes a B. But the buy mode is still in place. Look, the up arrow is there, and you haven't even come close to that low. So then, therefore, I have to continue the count. And that's it. You've got to a C right here. And you've started to have with inside track repellent zone. Well, it goes to D and E, pulls back. So I have to call that an F. It could be an alternate count, but at this point, I'm going to call it an F. And it just says, put together, it says, be a little careful here. Be very selective. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Target Ignitions Hour. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. I had a question about AQST. This is a Quest of Therapeutics. It's a biotech company uh, trading at uh, 3.75 down 19 cents. So um, the question was, where would uh, where's, a, where's a place to add to a position? So um, since you've already got the position, that makes it a completely different animal because it means that you have belief in it. And therefore, what I'm looking at is where would be the trigger point to say it stopped going down and that it's going to stabilize, then does it stabilize sideways and then gap to the upside? Or does it uh, have a V-shaped pattern by gapping down and then turning around? Because it is a biotech. So it had this huge gap down from the 540, what was that? 562 uh, high, uh, sorry, 541 low. Was that a 541? Five, uh, that's a 511 low on the um, 19th of March, and the next day, the gap down high is 4.79. But it didn't have one tick above that. It's only made lower lows and lower highs. So that just says to me, being a biotech, you have to wait for news. So what I would do is, as you're getting closer, did you have a date here? I think you said there's a date. Is that in April? 4.28. Uh, 4.28? Right, getting very my problem with up, up, FDA inflection points. Um, okay, so you're looking out and looking out. I'd said before that the way that it went to leg C, how it closes is going to be very important. I drew a trend line in that came right back to that trend line in the monthly chart. <clears throat> All I can say is looking out. If it, if it holds for I because it's a monthly chart, I'm going to actually say, and it's a biotech. I'm going to say not just once, but if on a two-day, preferably a three-day uh, participating on the upside, holding above 520, it's trading at 376 right now, it's biotech, so you can talk these big numbers, I would say that would give it a chance to start that leg D to the upside to go higher than the 6.31, 6.23 high that was made. That's number one. Number two is, I wouldn't add to it right now. And even if I say to you, I'd rather have a, a three-day uh, picture whereby it it breaks to a new high, pulls back, and then makes a leg B. And it needs to do that, I'd say, within three or four sessions. So you can get not just an A, but to a B, and it's made a lower low, so they would have to start from today's low. Um, so if you wanted a number... <clears throat> The number I'm looking at is 347 in the weekly chart. That's the 200 period exponential moving average. That's not far away, 30 cents. It does that. It could do that in a day. But more importantly, it isn't the number. I'm looking at the number of bars that it has higher highs. It's n it's not made more than a peak A. Uh, maybe that's a B. No, it's a double top. It needs to make a decisive leg B strongly above a PK, and then give me a call and we'll have a look at it. I don't think this for me. Looking at the FDA, and this is the 16th, so you've got, you said, until the 120 what? 24th, uh, late, uh, 28th. So the 28th of April will be, oh, good trading on a Saturday. Very nice. <laughs> so you won't be able to do anything there. But I would just say to you, it's not the number, it's the pattern. And I'll draw this in and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So you see this, you see these low, these higher. So let me take this high bar right here. And then look at the lower highs. And look at the parallel that we're looking at here. So this is a mini channel. And it's a very unfortunate one because it's made a gap down and that high hasn't been even broached uh, close, but not even gone near breaking it. And now you can do a parallel channel right there, because two trend lines make a channel. And what I'm saying is that coincides with key support. That's a 358, 360. 
It's trading at 376. If it takes out 360, if it goes to 358 and closes under 358, then the 347 level might just be a starter. So I'm going to say two positions. One is a nibble at 347, but I prefer that you give me a yell and we'll do this together down in the den. Uh, and number two is I would probably say to you, I'm still wanting to see higher highs. I don't want lower lows. That's catching a falling knife. So all I can say is that eventually when um, a quest of therapeutics, AQST, is trading, not just hits, but trading in the, in the uh, gap, of, in the 482 area, that's where I think you've got something more appropriate. <laughs> I hope I helped you spend a little time there. I could have said it a lot quicker. Um, we haven't got any uh, big trends. I'm going to test myself. Uh, current remaining holding is it? Oh, oh, you way down for sub 70 cost basis, uh, and you've taken most off in the five to five. Okay, so we're in the same we're in the same ballpark here. It is therapeutics. It is biotech. Um, I would prefer to get closer and closer to the uh, any FDA date of substance, and then look for higher highs. It's the best way to do this. And once it starts moving, you can actually jump on the bandwagon and stay there and with a trading stop. That's one of the better ways. But looking out, I, I must say, it's at five. What did I say? It was right there. 38, did I say? Oh, five. Yeah, somewhere around the 520 level that I'd be really careful. that If it gets up there, I think that's where it's going to really move to the upside. Next question was... Um, uh, I don't really want to do this, but I'm going to do this. Um, there, well, there it goes. Um, Nike. Someone asked me uh, uh, two days ago because I mentioned it in my uh, in my overview of my former subscribers how we can look at certain levels, and there's a chance that the round numbers can work to the upside as well. And I mentioned this a couple of days ago. I said, look. Uh, Nike had an 88.66 low in September of last year. It then screams up to the 120s, makes it what I call, it's it's like an arch formation, where it looks like the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. And what does it do? Dow's only up 27, S&P's up down 20 right now. Um, it comes back. While the market is tanking over the last week, it's running to new recovery highs. And it had on the on the 10th of April, it had an 88.78. That is six cents. So 88.78. Uh, that's 12 cents above the 88.66 low of September. <clears throat> the histogram, just the last couple of weeks, has started to improve in the MACD. That's not a big deal, but it's nice to see it improving. The stochastic was very weak at 9.74, but the on balance volume of the weekly chart, and this is on the weekly chart, started to move up because I'm talking about the weekly, week, weekly chart retest. But on the 10th, it had an 88.78 low and an 89 round number close. And then two days or three days ago, it had a 92 round number close. I'll be back, guys, of 27. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, 
you don't have to worry about that. As Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. Dow is up uh, 49, SP is down 15, and we've got Garrow in the oh, Newport Beach, and you're looking to rent something? Is that it? Yes, sir. How are you, Mr. Bezos? I'm well. How are you? Thank you. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, it is something that I was in it uh, last week, and I want to share that with you, and I need your idea. Very, very, it's very, very important for me. Uh, is the, is the stock is rent, R-E-N-T. And yes, that's if you bring re rent the my... daily chart, if you bring the daily chart... Yes, it's uh, a single leg say, H uh, to the uh, upside. Right. It ran from under five... To almost it went to twenty seven. Or well, let me just check the exact number. No, now 2890. I twenty eight ninety. Did you mention this to me, or did I see it on my screamer list? I think I wrote it down. Yep, I wrote it down. Uh, I have a list of of stocks that just pop up, and what's interesting, the screamer list. These are stocks under ten dollars that show up on as as having a good move, and uh, this was one of them. And I looked at it, and it's called Rent My Runway. And um, I thought, that is interesting. I think this is, I, I read about it, and this is to do with modeling and stuff like that. So what have yes. you done? Yes. This stock, as you know, um, on, on April the 3rd, it split, reverse split 1 to 20. Oh. It was something about uh, 40, 50 cents. It went to six dollars. Uh, on April the fifth, it went down to four forty-six. In four yep. days, it went up to twenty-eight ninety. Right. Uh, here, the only time that I had the, the courage to buy it was when it popped about the fifty-day simple moving average. I bought it at ten dollars and I got out of it at sixteen dollars and. It went up all the way to twenty-four dollars. So I was out already sixteen. So I made six dollars out of it. After Very that, good. I'm afraid. I'm even afraid to look at it. You see, I don't have the guts <laughs> to buy it or short it. Yeah. Now my question is that, Mr. Basil, is this going to come down to eight dollars, which was the gap on April the tenth, or? It's going to demise sometimes here, and it's going to shoot up from here. So when you look at stocks that have reverse splits, now they do that on purpose for some of the direction-type stocks, the three times short or the three times long. We just had that happen with our SOXS, the three times short. Yes. It, split, it reverse split 10 for 1. 
but the, yes. everything's the same except the price is different. But it's, uh, nothing's different other than you've gone from 10 shares to 1 shares or 100 shares to 10 shares. But this is the most important thing. General Electric, once upon a time, did that. That's one of the few really unbelievable success stories that I've ever seen with reverse splits. Okay, with that out the way, this is different. Everything about this says to me that it's trading right now down 62 cents at 14.10. Um, it's been cut in half from the, the what it was just two days ago. The way it looks, this looks to me like a fake out. It looks like something that it was an aberrational thing. It had very little to do with the company. It had to do with manipulation. So the way I'm looking at it, um, I can see a very quick move between 12 and 10. That's where the key, the key support level will be, in the 10s. If it takes out 10, that's going to be the perfect Eiffel Tower that looks straight up and then straight down. You know how the Eiffel yeah. Tower looks like an uppercase A, capital A. Well, um, yeah. that's the way I'm looking at it. I don't see anything in the technicals that say to me, uh, let me just look at the 120 minute chart right there. Um, do I? I just try to be as objective as possible. So that went A, B, C, D. It actually made a D or an E in the uh, Chapman Wave methodology up at that 27, 2750s. Um, no, if this nine period moving average crosses negative, this can be a really quick move down to the uh, tens. So it's a thirteen ninety five. I would be, I, you know, I don't know how you, you, because you have this good technique. You, you didn't have the courage, but you just had the per, perseverance to be able to look at it and say, I'm going along, and you did it, and you got out perfectly. The fact it could have gone to a hundred and ten. It doesn't matter. You'd made really good money, and you got out, yes. and you weren't, yes. you weren't vulnerable to the downside. So I'm looking at this, and I think that whatever it was. It looks to me like the first really good support will be between 12 and 10. If it takes that out, I wouldn't even touch the stock for a long time until it, it forms a real base. I hope that helps great. you. Great, great, great. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Congratulations, it. Carol, on that move. Very good. Thank so, you. folks, bye-bye. Bye -bye. I'll speak to you soon. So, but folks, I just wanted to show you that I'm going to go back to uh, Nike that we were looking at just because it was a, a work in progress that I wanted to talk about. So down 55 cents in 88.24. Uh, 82.42 was the low back in October or so of last year. And then it ran up to 100. This is the ISIS Treasury Bond, a 20-year Treasury Bond ETF. But look at this. Um Yes, it's trying to find some kind of a base right now. The stochastics at 8%. On balance volumes are very weak. The MACD, the histogram, that's the 0% line, is actually expanding. And that just says to me, please be careful here. We can. Certainly we can have at any point you can have a good rally. But now that I've got all the key indices that I follow with nine period moving averages under the 14 period going pink, just says to me, wow. This market has to really prove itself to the upside. Short term, it might do that. So I just wanted to say that the, the fact that the TBT, which is the inversion of the iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF, is the short side, has gone to a possible leg E to the upside right here, leg C in the daily. Is, I don't have anything other than that the on-balance volume is a little bit overbought, but the stochastics at 90% 90, 90 and not flattening, it's rising. The MAGD is rising. The on-balance volume is rising. Uh, so the, the relative strength index is rising. Um, it's only the on-balance volume that's a little bit overboard. So you can have a bit of a pullback as a digest. But so far, everything I'm looking at is suggesting that yields are going higher. Or at least they're not going to go down very much. They're stabilizing at the higher level. So I'm just saying that's important. So, so the question came in about Nike because of the analysis I did over the weekend. Did I type it in the wrong place? Yes, I typed it in the den. Sorry, den, that wasn't what I wanted. I just wanted to show you something that um, what you'd be looking at for double bottoms, and that's why we'd be looking at the TLT that's tried to double bottom and then it took out the left side low. It's done that umpteen times. Um, so let me just see this again. Yeah, so let me just look at this and say, I'm going to expand this a little bit because you want to be able to see it. So you've had the arch formation, and 
you're only now getting a little bit of stabilization in the weekly chart of Nike. What not, uh, Nike sports and sportswear? I don't know. I, I don't know what there is here that should be a viable entity. But I'm just looking at the chart, and the chart says, "Look, that pink nine-period moving average was in the daily chart went so sharply lower. Now it's trying to come back. It hasn't. It's not even close to crossing positive." But you've got this round number of 89 on the 10th, and then on the um, three days later, on the 12th of April, it has a 92 close, 92.00. I'll be right back. We'll talk about that. Dow's up 38. Tigers, we have some exciting news. Live trading Fridays are here. Join Larry Pesavento every second and fourth Friday of the month, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time, as he places short-term trades and gives insights into his strategies. That's right. That means the first Live Trading Fridays event starts this Friday, April 12th. Make sure to sign up so you don't miss the potential for huge gains. If you've attended Larry's stellar webinars before, you'll be familiar with the live trading portion. Live Trading Fridays will be strictly this portion. That's three hours of pure trading. All trade positions will be communicated clearly, and all questions will be answered in a timely fashion during these live events. When signing up, make sure to save $50 by using code LARRYLIVE at checkout. This code is valid only for this month, and the discount stays with you for as long as you're a subscriber to the service. So don't delay. Sign up, sit back, and follow Larry Pesavento as he places trades live. See you there, Tigers. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back, and let me just see if I can find this right here. Good. Okay, so uh, all I'm saying is this, that sometimes against the backdrop of tremendous positivity you can get negatively somewhere. In this case, it's a, against a backdrop of tremendous negativity with the, all the markets turning down. Nike is held. I don't know what they've got because, I mean, it's just a product like any other sports where you can get them anywhere. But look how it's held. And it held the um, 91, uh, sorry, the, the nine, 89 close, the round number close of uh, four days ago. And, and three days ago, it did 92. Today, went a little bit under it. And look, it's trying to rally. So this is what I wanted to point out, that you can't lock in, um, certainly with the round numbers. You remember, we've got NVIDIA with that round number high, all-time high. We've got a whole bunch of stocks, Berkshire Hathaway, et cetera. 
But now you also can look at lows, and the round number so far says maybe it's holding okay. Days young, anything can happen. I'm just looking at this and I'm saying sometimes you've got to be able to look at both sides of the coin. That's it. So let me just do this before we wrap up and hand you over to Steve Rose and all the great programming today. And once again, I think I might have typed in the wrong place. There we go. So as we wrap up, I'm going to say to you the Dow right now is trying to be independently strong. It's up 31. S&P is down 13. QQQ is down. But what I am looking at is this is an ugly candle again. And what I would suggest to you is that you've got to be somewhat cautious. I'm considering that these weekly charts are telling me a story that's a little bit of a bigger picture than I was thinking before with just the daily charts. Watch it closely. By the end of the day, I would like to see. What I like to see in the market isn't listening at all. I'm just talking to you. I'm saying... I would love to see a bounce. I'd like to see the Dow actually close towards the, the uh, is at 37,770s. I like, and the high today was 37,990s, a lot of resistance under 38,000. I'd like it to see at least close up about 90 or more points. And I'd like the S&P to actually close up about 15 points. The reason why I want that is I don't want the straight down because it's gonna impact that weekly chart. All the weekly charts, very negative. So with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Check out my 